I've been thinking that I'm going insane because I think Tesla stock is still pretty cheap here. The more and more yeah. I've like, I'm like, damn, I just totally drink the Kool-Aid here. But like when you start to play this out and you're like, okay, well, what are they going to do with the wiggle room? Are they going to keep dropping prices? Well, no one else is or keep raising margins. Like they're just, it's like Elon's the king in the castle here to decide with how to divert this excess like margin wiggle room. Yeah, and, and see, this is why I think it's really important to look at uh, the return on assets. And this is something I've been pounding um, for, for a couple of years now, which is that the biggest knock on investing in autos um, in general, auto manufacturers or any type of hardware manufacturers in general, is the capital intensity of the business itself. So why do, why do auto companies trade at such low valuation multiples? like GM, Ford, uh, Volkswagen, Toyota, they all traded at under 10 times earnings. Um, and the reason why that is, is not just because they don't grow all that fast. Because keep in mind, um, Tesla has phenomenal growth runway ahead of it, but ultimately no company can continue to grow at an above average rate forever, right? At some point you reach saturation and at that point, um, shares will then ultimately trade down to the industry average. And this has happened across yeah. the board. Our for growth all rate will, will have to compress to that of humanities, essentially. Exactly. We, yeah. yeah. So the fastest you can possibly grow in the long run, and I'm talking about the ultra long run, is the rate of global GDP. That's the fastest that you can possibly grow. If you, you know, are a ubiquitous car manufacturer and you've entered every market on the globe, and you know, now you're just simply refreshing your cars every, every year or so, then the fastest you can possibly grow revenue is at the rate of global GDP. So, so at that point. So, so why, I, I think I never go with this. So I'm, I'm like to play devil's advocate. So why were all the automakers in the world valued at 500 billion of this opportunity at maturity? And yet Tesla's already worth basically 500 billion, you know, t just I'm super rough numbers here, basically saying that they would already be at maturity dominating the whole industry. Right. And so and that's the what the skeptics and yes. shorts would say. But yeah. there's, a, there's a whole caveat there, which is your point of the CapEx, right? Exactly. So there's, there's two things that influence valuation multiples today, right? One is growth rate. And so that's why you have to look at valuation relative to your growth rate. But also in the long run, it's not just the growth rate, because as, I just, as we just said, you know, growth rate will, will ultimately converge down to glo you know, the global GDP growth rate. So at that point, the factor that becomes the most important for investors is efficiency. Um, and that's why Toyota, for example, is the, the biggest automaker in terms of, you know, I mean, before Tesla, you know, before Tesla overtook them. Prior to Tesla overtaking Toyota, Toyota was the biggest auto, you know, manufacturer by market cap. Um, even though they sell less vehicles than, Volk than Volkswagen. Um, and that's because Toyota has been the most efficient automaker on the planet. They have the best return on assets. So it's efficiency that ultimately, you know, drives valuation in the super long run, even if you don't have very, very high growth rates. And you can see that for many other companies like Coke, for example, Coca-Cola, they don't exactly have, you know, you know, eye popping revenue growth, but they still trade at a premium to consumer staples. Same thing with Procter and Gamble. They don't have, you know, they, they're not going to rock anyone's socks off with their growth rate, but they trade at a premium to the sector that they belong to. Why? Because they have above average efficiency on their asset utilization. So the reason why people are so excited about Tesla is not but, but, just the growth yeah, rate. But those companies, I would say, have increased it like ROI because of like some BS brand value that they built 30 years ago and are still leveraging these legacy distribution partnerships for, as opposed to like Tesla's like rapid growth and like technological moat, as opposed to like some lame process, like legacy systems moat that those companies have. That's why I'm like, almost it's like, it is a good analogy on the, on the paper financials, but when you're diving into why, like Tesla's premium is even more justified because it's not just a label that's a brand. It's actually like super technology under the hood. And what's Tesla's almost unparalleled is because they're defying the norms of high ROIC with the high growth rate at the same time. It's almost mm -hmm. like that's, it's, you know, and that was kind of why I wanted to have you on too. It's like, isn't this like a once in a lifetime business case study of like what other company, it's like they're breaking all the rules pretty much. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I think that uh, the reason why Tesla has overtaken Toyota is because of the growth rate that we're seeing right now, but also because if you look at this other chart that I, um, that I put together with regards to um, the uh, return on assets, 
And the way that I define return on assets is basically looking at trailing four quarters of EBIT um, divided by total or uh, divided by the average asset base over the last four quarters. So it's, you know, trailing 12 month EBIT divided by the average total assets. And why is this such an important metric or the best way to gauge it? um, Because it's telling us how efficiently is Tesla utilizing their asset base, right? For example, let's say you have two companies. They both are doubling revenue each year, year in and year out, which is awesome, right? But what if one company uh, requires CapEx spending of a hundred million dollars and the other company requires only $50 million of CapEx spending to achieve the same growth rate, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's always going to be the one that requires less capital to achieve that growth that's going to get the better valuation because it doesn't say it takes so much money to achieve that growth rate.